For many years now, people have been using the exact same ways to get into their bases, and most of them are very secure, and that's why they've lasted so long. Most people, when they think of a secret base, they might think of a resident torch key, because it's one of the easiest ways to make a secret base, and it's pretty secure, but if somebody knows where to put the resident torch, they can just place the resident torch down and hop right into your base. Another thing people think of as a security measure to their base is a combination lock, which you have to put in the right input to open the door, but that is right out in the open and most people can just trial and error unless you have a ton of levers right next to each other. However, what if I said that I could combine both these together? And that's what I'm going to be showing you in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video where today I'm going to show you how you can build this invisible combination lock for Minecraft 1.16.3 and above. Also, I'll leave a world download in the description as well as timestamps if you want to skip straight to the tutorial. So right here we actually have two designs for this thing. So how these work, they both work in the exact same way except they're just positioned differently so you have to do different things. So this one down here, you just walk near the ones that you want to activate in the combination lock. And this one, you have to stand under them and jump. So this one's a little bit more secure, but would only work if you had a big roof above you like if you're in a cave or something. While well, this could be against a mountain or something like that. But if we come over here, we can easily tell how this thing works. We have this pufferfish right here, which is actually on top of this boat. And the reason we have it on top of this boat is to position it perfectly so that when it inflates on the first level, it will hit this string and this observer will detect it. And then it will activate this piston. This has a redstone block on it. And then over here we have a huge AND gate. And you might have noticed that this one has the redstone already extended, and that means that we shouldn't activate this one for the combination lock. So that'd be pretty much the same as having a code that went this one and then this one, because if we activate these two, then all three of them are extended, and this end gate will detect that, which will activate this door, or in this case, we just have this note block that makes a nice little sound. And down here, it's the exact same code, and it works in pretty much the exact same way, except it's just positioned differently. So now I'm going to show you what this looks like when it's in action. Before I get to that, I want to show you how you actually use it. So for this one right here, you just have to walk up to the ones that you want to activate, just like that. And for this one up here, you have to jump underneath the ones that we want to activate. But I should also mention that this is a little bit buggy, because I think it's because of these boats that the proficient are on. Uh, because... Sometimes when they're on the boat, when you disconnect and reconnect to the world, they will actually always gravitate northwest. As you can see, they're all on these little corners, and these are all the northwest corners. And if we come up here, if we go into creative mode... Oh, <laughs> still used, not used to that new feature. Uh, if we come up here, we can see that these are all also in the northwest position. And when you disconnect and reconnect, these pufferfish all have a weird thing with their hitbox which means that they can sometimes glitch through walls, that's why you have to use fences here. And they'll also sometimes activate these uh, observers up here, and you can just fix that by walking up to them and activating every single one at each time you re-log from your world, which is a little bit annoying, but also, if you think about it, it actually adds an extra level of security, because before even entering the code, you have to activate every single pufferfish, otherwise it won't work. But, then if you go into survival mode, once again, Adventure mode also works. If we go up to these pufferfish, we can activate this one and this one, and that's our code, so it made that little ding over there. And if we wait for these guys to reset, then if we hit any of these, then they will not work, unless if it's the code that I just put in, which is this one and then this one. And also, as you can see, I've actually made them have nice little noises for each time that they activate or deactivate. Uh, you don't have to do this if you want to make it so that it's hard to hear if you accidentally activate it Like if I was walking by then I would hear that as it would walk by and it'd be a little bit suspicious But if I was walking under this it doesn't matter because as you can see and this if I was sprint jumping Then it wouldn't make any noises because you have to jump under each one to actually get the code in I actually personally like this one a little bit better because you have to specifically Enter each part of the code and you have to stand in the right spot. So then we'd have this one and this one, and I accidentally activated this one so that time it won't work. But if I do it correctly, and it's under this one, and under this one, then it makes a little ding. So now I'm going to show you what these would look like in the natural world. So as you can see, we're just in a normal mountains biomes, and all of this terrain is naturally generated, so you could easily find something like this in your world. And also doesn't have to be this extreme, uh, I just had this as what I chose. 
But if we come down here into this little hole, as you can see, if we walk up to this wall, you'll hear Pufferfish. And we have to get the code to open the door to get into the area. So as you can see, if we activate all of them, then that won't work. You actually have to put in the right code. So if we wait a little bit for this to reset, if I come over here, and then I come over here, then it will open this little area and we can walk into our base with all of our valuables. And then we can hit this button just to get out of our base. And as you can see, this thing is very, very secure. Um, even though you can accidentally activate it by walking up to this wall and either hear the pufferfish or the piston, or if you choose to use notebox, you can also hear that. But it's very hard to get guess this code because you can't actually see any of anything. And you also can't just break through what would be like an iron door or something in a base because you don't know where the door is. So now I'm in a cave. So I'm going to show you the next design for this. So as you can see, it's just a normal cave. And if we walk by, then everything looks completely normal. And as you can see, even though we walked right by it, you actually couldn't hear anything. So this was actually right here. And as you can see, if I jump right here, you can hear the different puffer fish. I can access this just by going up right here and then up right here and we'll open our vault. And as you can see, we have a humongous pile of diamonds. Maybe it wouldn't be this extreme, but we also have the dragon head and the lytra and stuff, which is pretty cool. And if we go out of here, we can just hit this button and we end up out here. And now for the materials, but this time I'm only going to do it for one of these designs because they're pretty much the exact same thing, just built in different orientations. But if you want to, you can find the materials and the actual design in the world download down in the description. But for the materials, this is what you're going to need. But there are a few things that I will need to explain. Like these can be any type of fence. This can be any type of solid full block. These can be any type of full block. And then over here, there's these note blocks and the blocks that make different sounds for the note blocks. These one blocks were just for little rings that the pufferfish made when they expanded. And this packed ice is for the ding that the thing makes to simulate the door opening into your base or something activating because you could also use this to activate something else. And these note blocks are also optional because these are paired together to make the different sounds. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is find a nice area to build your secret invisible combination lock. And um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to only be showing you how to build this design right here. But if you want to, you can find this design in the world download as well as the materials for both of these. And then if we come over here, we have this extremely real uh, naturally generated terrain right here uh, that you would want to find if you were to build something like this. You could also use something like that cliff right over there. You can find these things pretty much everywhere. But then if you go over here, we can place a block right here with a block below it. This one has to be a fence. And then let's make a circle out of it. Just like that. And then you can put these back to back right next to each other as many times as you want. I'm just going to do it three times. Um, but the reason we're doing this is because this is where all the different pufferfish are going to be. And the more pufferfish you have in here, the more secure that your combination code will be. And then if we come over here, we're also going to want to place blocks in the middle of these. And then blocks underneath them. And then you can break the blocks. Then you're going to want to put boats in each one of these. And then you're also going to want to get in these boats and you're going to want to find the northwest direction in your F3 menu. So you can see which direction you're facing and where it says facing on the left side in the middle. So right now I'm facing west and we want to find the northwest direction. So that would be right here and then drive your boat right into that for all of these. So now all of our boats are in the northwest direction and then you're going to want to Put a puffer fish in each one of these and then it should just look like that then you're going to want to place a temporary block right here with string on top and you can do that for all of these puffer fish after that you're going to want to place observers on top of all of these and then you're going to want to place blocks on top of these as well then you're going to want to place sticky pistons facing outwards with redstone blocks on all of these but you're also going to want to change the position of these redstone blocks depending on what your code should be. So if you want your code 
to beasts, for example, this one is powered and this one is powered, then you'll bring this out on each side and leave this one in the middle empty if you don't want to have to power that one. Then you're going to want to place a temporary block right here with a block below it, and this should be a solid block. And then you're going to want to break that temporary block and go two blocks to the side, place another solid block, two blocks to the side, and another solid block. You can break these. Then place redstone dust on all of these blocks. And then you're going to want to place a redstone torch here, a redstone torch here, and a redstone torch here. And then you can come down here, place a block right there with a block below that, break this, and then place another block, a solid block, and then two more blocks to reach the opposite side, and place redstone dust on all of these. And then you're going to want to place a redstone torch right here. And then some optional features, if you want to add them. We have these no blocks, and we can put any type of block that will make a different noise under them, or just leave them blank so that they make the default noise. And then you can also put them next to these observers. And you can also tune these to whatever note you want them to be. So just to test this, if you come over here, or, and we go into survival mode. The thing that we have to do before we actually use it is activate all the puffer fish before it starts working because the puffer fish's hitbox are a little bit glitchy when they're inside of boats. And then if we go over here, our code was the first one and the last one, it makes the ding. But if you do it with any other code, that doesn't work. And even if we do the last one, that will not work. So as you can see, this works perfectly, and it's very nice to use in your worlds for a really good secret and invisible security system. Once you've done that, this design is complete. So if you like this video, then please leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, then please subscribe. And if you really, really enjoyed it and would like to support the channel because you like what I do, then you can become a member and you get a bunch of member-exclusive perks. And also, I've actually started being more active on my Discord server that I made a while ago. I used to just let it die because I kind of forgot about it for a while, but I've started to be more active on it, so if you'd like to join that, then there's a link to that in the description. Bye-bye!